Hey guys, John from JBR here. Last month or so, I've been getting absolutely hammered on Facebook with people asking a ton of questions about these Bill Boss plates. I did take some with me to Jamboree to put on display and plan to be available to show everyone and be there to answer any questions about them, but when Steve Barnett somehow decided it would be a good idea to try and jump the wall at Willow Bank and park his car over in the paddock, all my well thought out Jambo plans got thrown out the window. So, figured it was probably just easier if I made this short video. Just so you can all have a close up look at the plates, I can run through some of the key features, explain the reasons why I choose to use these plates in my engines. Okay, now to give you a basic overview of the plates themselves, uh, I have a front plate here that's about to go into one of my race engines. This particular set of plates has had a few extra mods done to them that aren't standard that I like to do on all my race engines, but essentially it's very similar to how they come from Bill at Boss. When you pick these plates up, the first thing you'll notice is the quality of the machining and the attention to detail that uh, goes into them. They're all machined on a fully integrated five axis state of the art CNC machine that's only around six months old and worth about half a million bucks. So when it comes to the equipment being used in terms of accuracy and repeatability, you really can't get too much better. Um, you also really notice that accuracy uh, when you're assembling these engines. The dowel slide in and out perfectly. You don't ever have to use a hammer to belt them in. Everything just goes together really smoothly. Plates are modeled off uh, the Cosmo style master plate with a large intake port runner. They've been beefed up substantially in the areas uh, that are prone to cracking on the factory plates. Outside dimensions, uh, again, are all identical to the master plate, so all the bolt holes for your intake manifold, timing cover, oil pump, water pump, bell housing, etc., etc., all bolt up just like it would on a standard plate. Aluminium is 7000 series, um, or what's called a 7000 series aluminium, uh, very similar strength properties to steel but it's obviously a lightweight alloy. Uh, the 7000 series is a lot harder and a fair bit more expensive than 6000 series. The cost of machine it's a lot more uh, because of the higher rate in tool wear, but because it's a much harder material, there's quite a few advantages to be had when using it in an engine plate, which I'll talk a little more about later on in the video. Plates themselves are a two-piece design and have the removable face plate like so, these face place, face plate inserts are made from cast iron, uh, surface ground flat, they're nitrided to harden the surface so it's wear resistant and they're held in place by these six screws around here. Behind the face plate, on the plate itself, uh, there's two o-ring grooves machined into the plate. Uh, you can see here, this o-ring here stops the water um, or water getting in the oil and making a milkshake in the sump um, and this o-ring here seals the intake port so no water ends up getting in your motor and I guess while we have the face plate out we may as well have a good look at what else is going on in here. Now a number of reasons I do like these um, removable face plates. But the main reason is uh, allows all these water jackets here to be machined into the plate, which to me is super important. Face plate itself sees a lot of friction. Um, you've got the side seals, corner seals, oil seals, all creating a metal on metal contact with the face plate. So you can imagine when the engine is spinning at 10,000 RPM, that's going to generate a shitload of heat. But by having water circulating behind the face plate, it not only dramatically reduces the amount of heat in the plate itself, but also keeps the temperature across the entire plate nice and consistent. 
Now, big advantage you get from that is the thermal expansion of the plate is kept to a bare minimum, and the amount of expansion it does have is relatively, relatively consistent all the way through the engine. Now, the reason this is so important is because when metal expands, it moves, and if it moves a lot, which in the case of a rotary engine, the plates and housings move around, which screws up the alignment of the engine. So if you can imagine, if this part of the plate here gets way hotter than this part of the plate out here, the plate itself is going to, to warp. And then if the plate warps, even by just a couple of thou here, over the length of the entire engine, by the time you get to the other end, that couple of thou's turn into 10, 15 thou. And for those of you who are watching who have spent a bit of time building rotary engines, you'll know how important it is for the bore of the engine and the front and rear stationary gears to be perfectly in line. If the engine isn't perfectly straight, and you're pretty much fucked before you even start. You're more than likely going to tear the bearings out of the thing, usually by about the time you get the half track. Another part of the engine that's affected a lot by temperature are uh, the face plates. Now, as I mentioned before, side seals, corner seals, all seals, all run on this surface and seal on this surface. If the surface isn't perfectly flat, your engine's not going to seal properly. When that happens, your compression goes past the side seals, which ends up pressurizing the sump. That pushes all the oil out of the sump in the catch can, and not to mention the engine loses a ton of power and torque at the same time. So again, by having water circulating evenly behind this face plate, it goes a long way towards helping keep those temperatures down and any movement in the plates themselves is kept to a bare minimum. Uh, the face plates are replaceable. Uh, they're only about 600 bucks each, so if you ever do have a whoopsie, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I've personally never needed to replace one, but Billet Boss keeps plenty of them on the shelf, so you can be back up and running in no time, if needs be. All right, now onto the porting. Me personally, I get all my ports done on the five axis CNC, which is one of the best things ever because I hate porting. As you can see, the CNC porting looks pretty damn flash. And because they're done on the CNC, each port's identical. I don't touch the ports with a grinder. I leave them exactly how they come off the machine and I'll put the engine together. I could spend a week swinging off the die grinder and I would never get them as good as what the CNC can. They're good enough uh, to run mid sixes and 213 mile an hour in Steve Barnett's car just the way they are. So I'm happy to leave them just like that. However, if you are one of those guys that does like to do his own porting, then it's not a problem at all uh, with these plates. You can grind the ports, it's not going to affect anything because the insert's cast iron, it's just like porting a, just a factory cast plate. Uh, another feature I do like um, on these plates is this nice radius here and in here. It's a 3D radius done in several small steps and it creates a lot more thickness around the bell housing area. Um, while we're looking at the back plate, one more thing that I think is very important is this hardened steel insert for the rear stationary gear. As I explained earlier, the alignment of the stationary gears in the plates is super important. The steel sleeve not only provides a perfectly round bore for the gear to slide into, but if the engine ever has a big backfire, which often happens in methanol engines if it runs too lean, the explosion from the backfire tries to push the stationary gear out this side of the engine, and on an aluminium plate, uh, if it doesn't have that insert in there, the steel stationary gear can dent the aluminium and push 
it across to the side, which causes the stationary gear bore to get oval. When that happens, stationary gear slops around, and once your stationary gear starts slopping around, you've got no hope in hell of keeping bearings in the engine. So I think that pretty much covers all the features that I wanted to talk about. I'm sure there's plenty more, but if there's anything that I've missed, just put it in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer it. If anyone's interested in these JBR spec billet boss plates, shoot me a message and I'll get you hooked up. Uh, one more thing I'd like to do is um, give a shout out to my good mate Charles Williamson. He's the main man responsible for these fine pieces of engineering. He's still recovering in hospital from a nasty car accident. Just want to take a moment to wish him all the best for a speedy recovery and hope to see him out here again soon. Hope you all liked the video and learnt something from it. Bye for now.